Good afternoon to all. I would like to inform you that we will have uh, interpretation in three different channels, in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. The chat is not activated, but you can use the, the question and answers to question the panelists in the end. Welcome. This event is uh, made by New Acropolis, it's an international organization that works with uh, philosophy, culture, and volunteering. This week, we are celebrating 65 years of existence in the world. I am Lucia Galvão. I'm a professor of philosophy in New Acropolis, and I will be moderating this event. Today, we'll have the webinar, Challenges and Missions. <clears throat> the value of applied uh, philosophy to apply uh, in a global citizenship. <clears throat> New Acropolis in the Brazil has a status of consulting special uh, uh, together with the UN. And in this, and it promotes a global uh, talk about diverse types of subjects. We believe that philosophy can and should be taken to many different aspects of life. Today, we will have three different presentations of approximately 15 minutes and followed by a debate in the end. I would like to invite Eva rodriguez Belegahig, who is a specialist to New Acropolis, and she will talk about challenges and missions learned in global partnerships in education. Thank you very much, Lucia Elena. To start with, I'd like to thank Nova Acropolis Brazil for their invitation to the side event of the High Political Forum high level political forum. So according to the letter from the president of the Economic and Social Council, the ECOSOC, this is the first on-site event after the pandemic in New York. 130 officers have been reunited at the ministerial level, including seven head of states and many NGOs around the world that participate virtually. I'd like to comment briefly that the objective of this event is to have the possibility of discussing and of speaking about how to reverse the negative effects of the pandemic and the SDGs and to lead the countries to towards the vision of the 2030 agenda. So within this framework, we have five SDGs. Among them, the SDG number four. So we are working on those SDGs. So in this occasion, I was asked to have a brief analysis about the challenges and lessons learned when making some alliances for the quality education. So I'm going to be based on the work that is being done by the international organization Nova Acropoli around the SDG number four and 17. So, as Professor Lucia Elena has said it before, the International Organization of Acropoli has been working for 65 years in teaching of philosophy and promoting culture and in volunteering. So during this decade known as the Action Decade, of the United Nations, the Novacropoli is present around the 53 member states of the United Nations, and it has joined the 2030 Agenda. So its institutional work has the points that you see in the screen, building the peace, quality education, environment and building alliances to reach the objective. So this support will be done through almost 500 offices that we have around the world and that 
work in these topics, which are philosophy, culture, and volunteering. The combination of these three axes of training allow us to have a balance between the theory and the practice and to train global citizens who want to improve their surroundings with volunteering and also joining some global initiatives like the World Day of Philosophy, where all of the offices of Nova Acropoli participate. So I'd like to explain a little more about this combination of proposals, this educational proposal of Nova Acropoli, because we're looking to combine philosophy, culture, and volunteering to educate on skills. And we are looking for universal and integrative humanism. So the main idea is that for us, education is a means to improve quality of life for human beings. The program of studies have been, has been registered and we have many certificates we have an average of eight to 12 hours per month. And these classes are completed by activities that promote culture, intercultural respect and volunteering that helps the community. The pedagogic purpose of all of these activities is to have better human beings. So this program belongs to the category of non-formal education and it is open and available for all people who would like to participate. And we provide some scholarships, some partial or total scholarships to students. Since or for 65 years, we've been promoting education to help people, not only to make more intelligent people, but also to have more generous and hardworking people. So in this program, we include the mind, the heart, and the hands. And then we have our proposal for a global citizenship of the UNESCO, and we propose to strengthen the cognitive, social, emotional, and behavioral learning. So we make the following question, how can we contribute to rebuild a better education after the pandemic? So first of all, we have our program, as I have explained it before, it is contributing to the goals to guarantee an inclusive, inclusive education with equity and a quality education to promote opportunities for all. We contribute to the indicator 4.7 in the agenda 2030, this indicator, I'm going to read it, to guarantee that all of the students acquire theoretical and practical knowledge necessary to promote a sustainable way of life through education for a sustainable development, human rights, the promotion of a culture of peace and non-violence, global citizenship, valuing cultural diversity, contributing to the culture of sustainable development. So we have fostered thousands of activities to promote respect and cultural diversity as well as more sustainable ways of lives, as well as citizenship. Within this program, we are centered in strengthening the citizenship values. Here we have some figures that I'd like to share with you. So during 2021, we had 1.06 million of participants virtually as well as on site around the world. Besides, this has allowed us to have some alliances among many cities that could foster the educational objectives. Besides, we 
had 149,000 hours of classes and we had a very high percentage of participation in activities to promote philosophy around the World Day for Philo Philosophy. So we have some activities in Switzerland in that photo. Another way to support the SDGs was to build some alliances. So we promote networks and we work with other organizations and institutions to contribute in a specific way to the formal educational systems. We work with private schools, with public schools, with universities. And we can observe that in 2021, we performed more than 1000 alliances. Among them, or through these alliances, we reached 5.8 million people. Out of this amount of alliances at 29%, I mean 349 alliances have supported the SDG number four, which is quality education. Now we have the following question. What are the challenges that we face after the pandemic? So that is our discussion matter today. I'd like to speak about a recent report. So the challenges of education are big. I mean, they existed before the pandemic, but they have exacerbated. So this report, done in June 2022 with big organizations like UNICEF, UNESCO, US, USAID, and the World Bank says that 70% of children cannot understand a simple text. This implies a pedagogic labor, which is huge if we want to help, especially to the most vulnerable populations. We need to understand their duties and rights to be able to build the citizenship for the future. And we need to start by the basics. So certainly these are difficult times and we need to face huge challenges, but we consider that among all of these subjects, this one is transversal and it is a key point to develop human being and it is the only way to face these difficulties that we are experiencing in many spheres. Besides, I'd like to mention that I'd like to mention an information, thinking about an event in 2020 organized with some volunteers from the United Nations. They reported a survey that they made with more than 22,000 people where we could see volunteering in education. It is one field that re requires a lot of volunteers. So we are taking this piece of information. It was a technical meeting about volunteering. It was from the United States nations in 2020. And we have this very interesting data. If you see this next slide, we see that 90% of volunteers consider the volunteering actions as a positive action for somebody that they know. And even to themselves, the last bar, the blue bar, means that the 27% considers that doing volunteering has benefited them as well. So we have these big challenges and these invites us to work in team with the organizations, the companies, the governments and the education ministries. According to the case or to the localities where they they are located. So we need to be a part of the solution. We shouldn't be indifferent to these problems that the pandemic have created. So to finish this 
we think it is important to share the lessons learned. We have three lessons learned, so I'm going to sum them up. We need to work hand in hand with other institutions after the pandemic. We could share three lessons learned. The first one is that there is an environment of mistrust that has been established in the world population mindset. So the pandemic has created the social distancing and we have used technology to be connected. And the sense of isolation has been exacerbated. Creating alliances means that you can trust that person. So it is a work that cannot be done in an isolated manner. We need to work with other people. The Agenda 2030 gathers all of the challenges that a humankind faces, but if we achieve that, we can try to build some feasible solutions to generate a common good for all of our communities. The second lesson has to do with resilience. During the pandemic, we have observed that the Long-lasting projects and projects that resist adversities are those that have leadership, local leadership committed to the common good. And education is required for these leaders so that they have these high doses of humanism, art, philosophy, and volunteering. We need to gather all of these elements to create resiliency and to develop capacities for leadership necessary to face adversities and to create our future. Third and last lesson learned, it has to do with technology. The pandemic brought a very visible transformation regarding education towards the digital. So that's why even if that has been positive in many aspects, we have a challenge that the educational transformation shouldn't be exclusively linked to, technolo to technology and digital and the digital part. So some resources are still necessary for the education, but the education it's some on-site transition spaces to develop the skills and the sensibility that couldn't be done in the digital spaces. So we need to have these formal programs that need to be done with creativity, flexibility. So this is a challenge and we have learned that this can be done. I'd like to finish. within the framework of these historical forum of the United Nations. And we think that we should gather at least the minimum standards for education. For those people who would like to have more knowledge about themselves, we need to have people who will make an effort to improve themselves and improve their surroundings to be able to overcome the, ex the challenges that are awaiting for us. So thank you very much for this work and have a very good day. So good morning, good afternoon, according to the place where you are located. And thank you very much to the audience. The creation of ties of trust and through public and par private partnerships, common goals for gains in the global education sphere. I now invite Melissa Andrade Costa, Director of Nike Consultancy and National Secretary of Institutional Relations of the New Acropolis Brazil North Division. She will talk about education and global values for low-income children the experience of the program Children for the Promotion of Good in Brazil. Good afternoon. 
It is a pleasure to be with you today to share a bit about the experience in New Acropolis with applied philosophy, focusing on a humanist education and what we can do to bring some of this deeper human education for our educational systems and what we can do to build bridges between civil society and the government so that we can better educate our children and our youth and also our adults. What I'll do today is present to you the results of an assessment that was conducted about the program Children for the Promotion of Good. This program is conducted by New Acropolis in Brazil, in the city of Brazil. And basically, this program works with after class activities for low income children. These children spend the morning in class, and after class, they have catch up classes, art classes focusing on complementary education. It's a program that receives public and private resources. We have 180 children that are benefited. This program is very interesting because we work with volunteers and at the same time, we have a paid staff. What I'll show you now are findings that show us how the program contributes not only to the education of children, but also to develop this component of values with the volunteers themselves. As I was telling you, the program provides classes after, class, after classes, and it also provides medical assistance with general practitioners, with dental care professionals, speech therapists. We also have workshops for parents to train parents, help the parents with better educational practices for their kids, and it also provides support to the families, employment opportunities, and also we distribute food baskets. What's interesting in this program, we're talking about the component of applied philosophy. We notice philosophy as a cross-cutting axis. It's present in all of the axes of the program. What I want to show you today is a bit of the methodology behind the program and the assessment that was conducted to show you how a more humanistic methodology has provided good results. The program has an interesting view concerning applied philosophy. We start with an education focusing on a skills matrix. The complete individual must develop skills in the practical sphere of life, provide intelligent responses to what life provides. We also work with the development of effective skills involving empathy, teamwork, rational skills. This is something I'll also describe and also spiritual skills. I consider that this pedagogical milestone is something very important in the program and it's quite innovative because we're talking about building an individual considering all of his or hers dimensions the practical dimension rational spiritual and social and effective dimension in this methodology that was developed i'll show you a few of these results in the practical skills the proposal is to work on the relationship with one's environment, with one's own body, with the environment. Also deal with the resources that nature offers. This is connected to SDG 4, Education for Sustainable Development. The proposal of working with the children is that so that children can un understand and learn how to deal with adversity. An interesting story that I heard from one of the families is that one of the kids learned how to deal with the separation, the divorce of their parents based on what they learned in the program. So we are building these skills so that children can deal with adversities better. And there's also a part in the practical sphere, which is acknowledging work as a tool for personal growth and for providing services to society. In this methodology, we also work with effective skills. We have skills 
associated to respecting differences between human beings, interpreting symbols, developing social skills, acknowledging the different artistic and scientific developments, and developing a more courteous attitude, a better capacity of relating to others. This is also under the skills in the program. In the rational sphere, we have an axis focusing on the development of logic skills, searching for deeper, under, deeper meaning in life, organizing ideas and thoughts, understanding the laws of nature a bit better, and translating knowledge, providing responses to daily life. And finally, the spiritual sphere will work with the acknowledgement of the principle of unity, and we cover the different possibilities of perceiving the unity of life. We're not talking about God in the religious sense, but it's simply humanity and also the capacity of synthesizing thoughts, acknowledging the present moment, participating in life in a, more, a manner that is more aware, connecting to oneself and finding a life's purpose. I consider that this skills matrix is very important, not only in working with children, but also with adults. This is very promising when we conceive a new type of education, a deeper education, a more comprehensive education. I want to show you some of the results. We talk a lot about philosophy, but how can philosophy be applied in practical terms in the educational sphere? How do you work with children? What types of results can you obtain? We made significant efforts last year to assess the program. What I'll do now is share with you a few of these results so you can notice that this has a practical implication and this can bring concrete gains. This is something that we can measure. In this assessment, what did we notice? Children, they're benefiting from improvements in their health. This is from the perspective of the students themselves. The children are benefited. They have helped more in house chores, avoided waste, and they are acknowledging the value of work. There are other skills that we have to improve on. This is something that the program is doing. We're trying to better develop these skills. For instance, writing better, expressing oneself better, and some other skills concerning hygiene and eating habits. These are other skills that we want to enhance. Concerning emotional skills, from the perspective of the parents, this is quite revealing because the parents are talking about their children, the results that were achieved. Parents say that the program helped in understanding how people are different, children being more polite. Many parents say that the children now respect better other people, the coexistence with others is easier, and we still lack, there's still room for improvement in the development of emotional skills that are more elaborate. For instance, speaking about how you feel, better controlling your own emotions. And all of us have to work a lot in this sense. We usually say that the educator can give what they have. So we have to develop even further these emotional skills, but the program and also empathy, respecting others, we have achieved good results in these skills. Concerning rational skills, we observe that the children have been successful in math skills, um, being punctual, expressing their ideas, being more organized. There are other competences that have to be further developed. For instance, having a taste for study, honoring one's worth and commitments, but still, some skills are being built and the program shows promising results. In terms of spiritual skills in the perspective of the parents, some of the children and some of the parents say that the program has contributed to make children happier. And it's a summary of the program itself. Uh, we're educating human beings that are more harmonized with nature. 
children are now reflecting more about life and the situations that they live. They're trying to better understand the world and their lives. And there are more elaborate spiritual skills that we will focus on, help children to understand their own role in the world. They are children after all, these are higher skills that still have to be improved in the future. Maybe when they reach their teenage years and also with the youth in general. Something else that I'd like to highlight and is also relevant is the element of developing skills among volunteers. I talked to a lot of volunteers. I had focal groups. We conducted this assessment with several volunteers. Something that was clear was the development of spiritual and rational skills among the volunteers because they come in contact with the reality of these children. So they reflect more about their own lives and their own personalities. They find purpose to their lives. They come in contact with themselves. We observe an impact that was generated not only from the perspective of the children, but also from the volunteers themselves. I also like to emphasize this because New Acropolis works a lot with volunteers. There's a proposal of helping volunteers develop themselves as well. And how does New Acropolis contribute to SDG4? The contribution is quite clear. The program maintains children in school. One of the goals of SDG4 is associated to this to avoid dropout rates, also develop literacy and numeracy among children. And finally, Eva mentioned Education for Life, a proposal of a global citizenship, having children that are more sensitive to their environments, to values that are different from their own, a sense of empathy towards others, and a greater capacity of providing services to society. This is something that the program does, and it, it is also included in SGG4. Some lessons learned and challenges, moving to the end of my presentation, it's quite clear that the state on its own cannot meet all of the needs. Society has to contribute, and a challenge of the program is to do more, even more, because we have growing demands. There's another lesson learned concerning the involvement of the families. It's not enough to benefit the children. Families have to be engaged, and this helps to strengthen children. Another important lesson from the program is that it makes children perform artistically in several venues in the city. So children perform in very visible venues, and this helps them to develop a sense of self-esteem and belonging to society. And this is an important finding in the program, an acknowledgement of each child, an appreciation of their individuality, because they're performing, they're playing, and they're being acknowledged in special places in the city. And another challenge is to maintain this contribution of philosophy with the volunteers and also the paid staff. They have to be trained so that we can maintain the spirit behind the program. These are a few quotes from the children, just to illustrate what I'm saying. One of the children, I set up a focal group and I asked the children, what do you see in your future? And I brought a response which I found very beautiful because one of the kids said, listen, my project for the future is to be myself. I thought this was very interesting because instead of saying that he wanted to be an engineer or a doctor, he wanted to be himself. In New Acropolis, we work a lot with the element of the development of individuality. Each human being should be as best as possible. And I thought this response was quite significant. The program is described by several children as a program that shows them the power of helping. Describe the program in one word. And they would say, do you want help, friendship? Some other child said good or help or important. So the program is developing the sense of helping, wanting to support, wanting to provide service to another human being. And I think this is an important skill in a society such as ours, because the central value right now is selfishness and not generosity. The program has contributed to make children more generous. And for the future, we want to do more and better 
because we have an enormous demand, New Acropolis also is asked to share its methodology in several different areas. This webinar is a part of this context, sharing experiences and exchanging experiences with other institutions so that we can have a public dialogue about the value of education, a comprehensive education where we're talking not only about technical skills, but human skills, practical skills, emotional skills, rational skills, and also spiritual skills. It's beautiful, beautiful to be able to work with children and make them happy and show them that they can help others. We're talking about a deeper education based on the philosophical principles that we work with in New Acropolis. And this in the future, the purpose is to provide more inputs for the local, national and international public debate so that we can enhance our vision of education so we can have a more humane, a deeper education making human beings more accomplished and fulfilled. Thank you very much. I'll wait for your questions at the end. Thank you so much, Professor Melissa. We can see in her speech, a very exper uh, successful experience in the usage of philosophy allied to uh, education to the development of human being with very good results. Now we're going to call Dr. Gabriel Paredes, psychology, clinical psychologist and specialist in children development. He's a, and he will talk about providing literature in public schools and access to uh, the superior uh, teachings, the experience in El Salvador. Thank you very much, Lucia Elena, for your words and for the presentation, the introduction. Thank you, Nova Acropolis, for the opportunity of being here, inviting me for to be in this event in the forum, a uh, high-level political forum on sustainable development in order to talk about our experiences and terms of education. I'm gonna talk about our learning in public and private institutions in order to rebuild education post pandemic, valorizing uh, the philosophy and global construction. I'd like first of all to talk about the context it is important to observe that we are in an uncertain, volatile, complex and ambiguous uh, context where the global assessment report on disaster risk reduction uh, that is one of the most trustable governance for, for risks in the world says that we can wait or expect for 1.5 disasters per day by 2030. So the cultural aspect is one of the most important things to value education. In this context, we will also uh, talk about an inform that has been published by the World Bank that says that, that the actual generation will lose around 21 trillion uh, million dollars in income over a lifetime. Without the strong basic skills, they will not develop higher skills, higher level skills to, to work in their personal area. So in this, in this level of SDGs 4, we present education, we present the biggest, the biggest registration of, of uh, kids missing school, and they have the highest levels of frustration. It is necessary a uh, compromise in all levels of society 
focus it in all levels that are enough to overcome this complex situation. We have never seen how, so many kids that have missed school during so long time. Most of all, younger people, but moreover, all this formation for centered in the transmission of formation, we need to develop capacities, skills and competences that will last all life. In post pandemics, all the interested parts want to search learning such as math without forgetting anything, anybody. But we need to value social and individual ways because they show you us values. We need to valorize the opportunity to learn and value what we have, what we are learning before this window of opportunities closes. After pandemics, we have learned that we need to focus on what is significant, what is really important what is going to be different for all of us. Way before the pandemic, we had evidences that the technologic advance, advance can limit the advance of some human skills. For example, the capacity of extraction. We can, kids cannot observe the, the hidden motors of the world and people think that they are uh, hidden, there, the, the limit between the objective and the subjective in a metaphysical way need to, need to be in two ways, concretion and abstraction. We cannot forget one of them because they can lose the contact with the reality. But if we reduce the capacity of abstraction, the ideals, values, the expectations about yourself, the understanding about the others, creativity, and learning about the others, uh, what, what we expect for the future will come down. Maybe we need to remember this, uh, this story from an old man that said that he had two trees, one for human growth and one from society work, uh, growth. And he needed to pay attention on the way how he was watering each tree, because if he didn't pay attention, one could grow more than the other. So we don't try to stop the growth of society and technology, but we need to invest also in the, in the society, in the human growth more than technology or also. So some words uh, can be more related to technology than to the human side. Let's go into context. We have in Central America, we have El Salvador, and it has a population of 7 million of, of people, and it is one of the highest populations in the world. It has a very young population, approximately 25 years old, and it makes that uh, the consequence is that it has three millions of students and in the world, in, in, the, in the country. Vulnerability of uh, poverty, theological traits as well. And we have a society that is vulnerable. Here we have another graph that show us the net entry uh, to first grade of elementary school. More than 800 kids and youth 
that were not registered at school on 2020. And this rate goes down, decreases progressively. We have another graph here that show us the amount of students in primary education. From 400,000 kids still 17 years old, only 150,000 are, uh, are at school, only 30%. They have, we need to take special and immediate actions to transform the life of these young, young people. That's why we think about showing or projecting something sustain, sustainable. Trying to make alliances with the public and private sectors that can support us. We have different uh, a branch of universities. We have the University of Santa Ana that want to form students with the big spirit of service, preparing them in an integral way. They have always been present. Uh, we have always had the, the support of the Ministry of Education and the private groups between 16 and 17 years old. Kids that study in 500 institutions, we've had 10,000 students and 104 scholarships have been given for these students. We also have the literature contest that has as main object to strengthen and enhance the cultural values, awaken love for literature and provide opportunities for young people to realize their dreams through the literary practice. As an of kids that have seen their stimulus into the literature, into the literary practice, it is one of the fewest organizations projected from civil society in Salvador. Some subjects or some themes, the hero, the cut the, the daily hero from Salvador, youth constructor of dreams, the heroism of living with values and connect with the peace, the little made with it. The few made with heart, tales and poems from my land, from a new world and friends of land, from earth. A group of uh, volunteers, I must say, motivate the participation in all the scholar centers in public and private areas in the occidental area of El Salvador. This has been, have been possible only because of the human intervention. A hundred, with a total of 114 scholarships, we have provided the improvement of high school and university studies. We cannot forget how these projects bring great opportunities of development to the volunteers that have provided. I invite you to meet this story in his own words, the story of the person that participated from this event. In 2003, I got the second place in poetry in the in literature. I was 17 years old. I was in high school, in the last year of high school, and I was very happy. It is like someone had told me, go ahead. Years passed, and I got my dream of being a professional writer. In 2013, I published my first book of poems, and it was well received. 
in 2015, I, I became jury of the contest of literature. And I'm very happy to contribute from this experience. I can see how kids and how young people can express their creativity. As, as New Acropolis helped me to do it. In 2016, New Acropolis proposed to me and, and gave me the ways, the resources to travel and participate in the Hispanic Writers Week from the University of Massachusetts in Boston. It was a great experience. I made it. Writers that read my poems and, I, and they talked also about their experiences of life. It was something uh, amazing for my life. I'm not a member of New Acropolis, but I, I collaborate with this project because I believe on it. They, they want to build a, few, a better future as I do. The literature contest of New Acropolis is an, an open space for youth that as it happened to me, reflect about their dreams and ideals. They express their creativity and develop their skills. Poetical art from Mario Zatino. Poetry is alive words like earth, water, heart. The poetry is a manifest of freedom that has wings, wings of fire, the strength of a heart, doors of the universe. And talking about in this context, in this framework of high level political forum on sustainable development, after it, in order to achieve this post pandemic uh, recovery of education and social skills, we want to promote the abstract uh, way of thinking, the art the philosophy, and they are the main ways to succeed on this project. We have enough uh, evidences after 50, 65 years of work in human virtues and social groups by diverse groups of age and culture that, that that work with art and philosophy that are the keys for the develop the sustainable development for the resilience and for the agenda of 2030. It has been a pleasure to be here in this event and contribute with my knowledge in the area of education. Thank you very much to everybody. I thank to Professor Gabriel for another successful experience that he presented to us in using art associated to philosophy to the to develop the sensibility of young people to develop better human beings thank you so much now we're going to start the questions i ask you to write down the questions so we can select them to the panelists And now we're gonna send the already made questions to the panelists throughout this presentation. The first question we did we we got to Professor Eva. How does Novacropoli support ODS4? Because it's not a teaching uh, institution. I'd like to clarify that actually, according to the SDG number four, according to the indicator 4.7, all of the organizations of civil society, even if they're not teaching institutions, but if we're doing a work that has to do to education for the global citizenship, has a, have a possibility to contribute to the SDG number four. So our programs are non-formal programs, but we contribute and we complete the formal education. 
actually this challenge explains the accomplishment of the SDGs. This field of work has been added for the civil society organizations and it is excellent from the formal institutions, which are teaching institutions. The teaching institutions don't reach all of the population. And precisely because of that, we can do it, even if we're not an organization who provides formal education. We can contribute along with other organizations who provide this formal education. And we have the possibility of including citizenship information, that's our mission, through philosophy, culture, and volunteering. All of what we do is pedagogic. Thank you so much, Professor Eva. And now I'm gonna send a question to Professor Gabriel. How can we evaluate the effects of the literature contest after one year? Thank you for the question. This is something that makes us reflect continuously. There are quantitative, quantitative and qualitative uh, evidences that allow us to evaluate the efforts. In a quantitative way, we have 114 young people that have had access to higher education, to university education, and the, the amount of educative institutions that have been reached also the amount of uh, so, social civil uh, groups that have given support, also the private industry that have given us support. But um, moreover than the numbers, we can talk about the sayings, the, the words of the young kid, the young man and woman that tell us about their experiences now our jury of, uh, of the contest that is Mario Cetin, like we have people that talk about it and numbers too. Thank you very much. As still for Professor Gabriel, how many people were uh, benefited by this uh, contest? Well, this is a very concrete uh, number. Till now, approximately 10,000 young people from 15 to 17 years old in these 20 years. And 114 scholarship, full scholarships for university. Thank you, Professor Gabriel. Another question is to Professor Melissa, but also to Professor Gabriel. To Brazil and El Salvador, both coincide uh, utilizing art, music, literature, etc. Why? I'll answer first and then I'll pass the floor to Gabrielle. In New Acropolis, we work with a comprehensive education and education for the mind and for the heart. Art works focusing on the heart. The heart connected to our emotions, to the development of our sensibilities. Art is a crucial component so that we can help the human being to grasp this deeper meaning of life that is connected to beauty. Art is related to a type of art that helps the human being to pursue such ideals. Plato, in the laws of Plato, he says something very interesting. He says that education should be artistic ever since early childhood, because when children grew, 
they would have had contact with beautiful ideas and they will find it easier to be passionate about such ideas. So art allows us to develop a sensibility and this enables people to think better, think higher thoughts. So I think that art is a crucial element that we work with in New Acropolis, which is the development of sensibility. In the world in which we live in, which is so brutal, art is crucial to raise sensibility. And this is embedded in our program, Education for the Mind and for the Heart. Thank you, Professor Melissa. And now I ask for Gabriel, for Professor Gabriel to answer. Thank you very, Thank you very much, much for, for that question. question. Why do we use so why do we use and art, music, music and literature as, as proposals? So I wonder I if ask myself, we're using if art, we or, use or, art or, or if art is using us. us. Art has art everything. Has it develops everything. the it develops perception the capacity, capacity, but also sensitivity. But also it helps to being it aware of oneself, but also of being of aware of the surrounding. And it, it helps. Gives us the opportunity it promotes to investigate and research. research. And also the but also it allows us to have our own subjectivity. Of a movement, art we also music, see math, that it, the it movement, is in it is, the art, art is extremely is didactic pedagogic. And, pedagogical. and it develops, it develops the, the human, human part, part. What is the most urgent uh, challenge to achieve? Thank you so much, Professor Gabriel. Now a question to Professor Melissa. How does Nova Acropoli decided to deal with the effects of restrictions during the pandemic? First of all, I'd like to clarify that I assessed the program. I'm a volunteer, but I don't work directly with the program. But since I assessed it, I know what happened. New Acropolis adapted very well to the pandemic, but it adapted providing urgent services during the pandemic, because during the pandemic, the parents, these are low income families, they have employment and professions, and they lost these jobs. So the program adapted itself and provided critical support, food baskets, baskets and providing employment opportunities for these families. The program also provided virtual classes to the students providing a virtual support. What I think is interesting in New Acropolis, we talk about adapting to a crisis. And this was a good example of an adaptation. The program was capable of activating its radar and identifying the needs of the community. And we were able to adapt and meet, the, meet, meet these needs. We were very quick to adapt to the needs of these families much, Professor Melissa. Another uh, question to Professor Melissa. New Acropoli uh, wants to uh, extend this program beyond Brasilia, beyond the federal district to another places in Brazil? New Acropolis has an experience similar to Children for the Promotion of Good in the region of Belém, in the state of Pará, which is called Ipearte. Ipearte is inspired in the program Children for the Promotion of Good. We have a very visionary national director. There are no limits to dreams in New Acropolis. So I'm quite sure that based on this proposal that we have in New Acropolis, expanding the benefits to society, there are no limits. But this webinar is supposed to raise visibility about these programs so that we can have more support, so that we can work together, so that we can do more. And I think that the experience of Ipe Archi in Pará is very interesting because it was conducted by a member of ours from Fortaleza. She was inspired by the experience and she invested her own money in the program. I'm quite sure that we have several other visionary people. They would also like to provide more benefits to society and there are no limits to dreams. 
if the, once the methodology is more consolidated, I think we should work together so that the program can grow even further to other areas in the country. And this is a strategic issue for the future with possibilities for the future. Thank you so much, Professor Melissa. Now we have two questions to Pro Professor Eva. First one, what are the international programs that Nova Acropoli uh, now de develops? Yes, thank you. So the three programs that are being implemented throughout the countries where Nova Acropoli is present is the program of philosophy, the program of culture, and the volunteering program. Besides those programs that I have already explained during my speech, we have some initiatives. And we've been contributing for many years with other civil society organizations, for example, Los de la Tierra, where we can rescue the conditions and celebrate the earth, not only from the ecological point of view, but also from the cultural and artistic point of view. And this allows us to have a better relationship with the earth, with Mother Earth. So that was an example for me. Thank you so much, Professor. And another question to our... Uh, we would like to know if you could give an example, how do these alliances are made through uh, Novacropolis and the formal education organizations? Yes, of course. So I'm going to use another program where that we use at the global level Two decades ago, Nova Acropoli joined the UNESCO's call for the Philosophy World Day, and it gave the possibility to all citizens to do philosophy about their history, etc. So we started celebrating it, and little by little, it has become a world celebration with multiple alliances throughout the world. An example that I really like is that some years ago in Switzerland, it started as an initiative around the day of philosophy and they had some long nights of philosophy. And it started awakening throughout many institutions, not only in philosophical institutions, but they also invited some businesses and all of the city was interested by this initiative little by little. And we made these alliances in Zurich and also in Lausanne so that these kind of initiatives are done or it could be done in a larger way. We have many institutions in these events, so we're doing this kind of alliances and we want to generate this community experiences that's something necessary. And besides that's done at the worldwide level with other countries, for example, with France, with Germany, and it is done as a joint effort with other institutions. So that's why I like to give that example, which has been a very good example. And it has allowed us to implement it in different countries. Thank you very much, Professor Eva. And considering uh, the limit of our time, we finish uh, our questions. Nova Cropley allows us to talk about different means of philosophy and arts and developing partnerships to uh, apply philosophy in different means of the society. We thank you, our, our, our speakers and our participants. Thank you so much. Good afternoon.